What up, everybody? And welcome to the truth about cheap guitars, starring the Jackson JS32TQ Dinky. Now, my regular subs are scratching their head right now, wondering what is going on. This is not my typical subject matter here at Baz on Blades. But what most of my subs probably do not know is uh, I have played the guitar for over 30 years. In fact, I started playing guitar in 1984 and played on and off as a performing musician uh, for a few decades. I played, I performed up till 1995, and now I am what you would consider a uh, serious hobbyist or enthusiast. And I am a gear hound. I have owned probably 50 different guitars, all the way from the budget realm like this guitar up to in excess of $4,000 on custom-made instruments. And um, recently, I wanted to get something inexpensive, cheap you might say, to use as a mod platform. And while researching, looking at YouTube videos to catch up on what all my favorite brands have been doing and their quality across the market and their product range, I started noticing something in the comment sections of the videos. There are so many young guitarists that are asking about buying their first guitar, their first serious guitar. And I know that these young people, many will save up their own money and buy an instrument, but even more of them, their parents will be buying the instrument for them. And the young people do not know anything about guitars. They've never owned a guitar. And certainly the parents, in many cases, know even less. And um, they need help from people around them. Maybe they know somebody that plays a guitar, or they rely on somebody down at a local mom and pop uh, instrument store or a big chain store. You always can use help, and that is what this video is about. It is to help uh, the young musician, the beginning musician, and their parents avoid the pitfalls that come with the learning curve of buying an electric guitar in this case that's what this video will be about is solid body electric guitars and believe me I have made many many mistakes in my life as far as buying instruments and you can learn from my mistakes now that is the reason why we're doing this uh, again, I said that I was get, getting ready to do a mod project, which basically is you look for a solid, quality, low-priced instrument that you can modify to your taste. Uh, typically, you will go into something like this, much like a new a uh, musician will go into picking an instrument. And let's face it, the number one thing that guides you is what does it look like? Is my favorite guitar rock star playing it? Is it something I am comfortable with being seen with? Um, you have to remember, no matter the type of music you play, whether it is country and western, heavy metal music like I played, the way you look matters. You are a performer just as much as somebody in Hollywood that is in a movie or somebody that is on Broadway uh, doing live performances. A performer has to worry about what they look like. So let's talk about that first. This guitar is one of the most basic body shapes available. It is a double cutaway. It is based basically on a Fender Stratocaster, the most famous and recognizable double cutaway guitar ever made. This guitar you might refer to as a modern Super Strat although there are some differences. But it is basically, overall, it is a double cutaway guitar. That was what I was looking for. 
whatever you are looking for, keep in mind, it needs to be comfortable to play. It needs to be comfortable to sit for hours and hours and hundreds and thousands of hours. If you are going to be serious about playing an instrument, you will sit and practice for thousands of hours in your life. The more serious you want to be, the higher skill level you want to have, the more dedicated to practice you must be. So, your instrument needs to be comfortable to use. Um, a bunch of young people, many young people, they will see something cool, a crazy shape, a flying V, an explorer. Um, BC Rich has got so many crazy shapes, and, and there are just tons of crazy, crazy shapes out there. And far be it from me to tell you what you need to like or not like. I am just saying you need to keep in mind it needs to be a playable instrument for somebody just beginning. You need to be comfortable sitting down with the instrument. You need to be comfortable standing up with the instrument on a strap. Uh, it needs to be of a size and shape that you can play it and learn on it. Parents, I know that your child is going to want just the craziest looking guitar, but you have to sort of guide them in this. And again, classic body shapes are a good place to start. A decent double cutaway like this, a single cutaway like a Gibson Les Paul. They are classic designs for a reason. They excel not only in looking and sounding good, but also being comfortable to play, being ergonomic for the human body. So, that is the first thing you need to look at. And let me say this. If you choose a classic body shape, that does not mean that is what you are going to play forever. In fact, I can tell you this. Um... Musicians go through a ton of gear in their life. Um, they very seldom uh, stay on one instrument for their entire life. In fact, my beginning guitar, um, I, within 10 years, I didn't even have that guitar. And I had been through probably six or eight instruments in that first 10 years. Uh, of all different body shapes. So that is, you're not set in stone. It's not, um, it's not like I started on a double cutaway and then I had to stay with that because it's the only thing I knew. Because basically a guitar is a guitar. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, let's go, the next thing that a young beginning musician needs to think about as far as a solid body electric guitar is one of the most critical decisions you will make on a first time instrument. And that is the type of bridge on the guitar. The bridge is right here on the guitar. It is basically the connecting point for the strings down here at the body end. And there are many different types of bridges, but I'm going to break them into two major categories. That is a fixed, non-moving bridge. This is one type of that. This is a tunematic bridge. And the second type is a tremolo bridge. And you will see those often with rock guitars and heavy metal guitars. In fact, in the heavy metal world, uh, it is predominant. That is the type of bridge used. Probably two to one over fixed bridges. And what a tremolo bridge is, uh, you will see the bridge here and it'll have a bar coming off of it. And you can grab a hold of that bar and what you do is you raise or lower the bridge in respect to the body of the guitar. And what that does is it raises and lowers the pitch of the strings in a very unique and often radical way. And it enables you to play techniques that you can only do with that type of bridge. 
and that type of bridge is the coolest looking bridge i mean it's big and it's got knobs and it's got the arm coming out and you see all your guys in music videos and up on stage using them and they're doing all the whammy bar stuff and it just looks cool young people want them i wanted them but the bad thing about that is uh, it is a much more complex bridge system than most, if not all, beginning musicians can deal with. What we are talking about is this. The bridge floats on the body. It will have a couple of posts, and it will hook against those posts. The strings will pull tension in this direction, and then underneath the body, in the back of the body, there are springs. The springs pull down on the bridge. And setting up a tremolo bridge is like a seesaw. It is a balancing act. You have tension from the strings, and you have tension from the springs underneath, and you need to balance that. What that means is, if you ever want to change the way your guitar is tuned, it changes the tension on these strings. If you drop the tuning, like in heavy metal, to have a deeper, thicker sound, then it will lower the spring or the string tension, and the springs that are on the bottom side of the tremolo will pull the tremolo body down towards the guitar. And vice versa, if you raise the string tension and do not compensate with added spring tension, it will raise the body of the tremolo up. That is a balancing act that most young musicians are not ready to deal with. It will become a frustration and it will inhibit them as far as learning on their instrument. So I always recommend for a first guitar to go with a fixed bridge. Uh, there is no movement in the bridge. You do not have to compensate for string tension. It is fixed. It is the easiest system to deal with. Does it look as cool? No, it does not look as cool. Can you do the same whammy bar tricks? No, you cannot. But the secret is you're not going to be able to do those tricks when you first start anyway. So what you're going to end up with is a guitar that is difficult to set up, difficult to keep in tune, difficult to deal with, you're going to become frustrated, and you're going to be just like, forget this, I don't even want to do this. That's what we want to avoid, because the beginning is the hardest part. Once you make it to a certain point as a guitarist, it really it just opens up like a book, and your learning and your joy, your reward just increases exponentially. So, what we've got here basic body shape, a fixed bridge. The next thing we're going to go on to with inexpensive guitars is assuring the quality of the instrument. And we're going to break that down into two categories. The core of the instrument, the foundation of the instrument, and then all the added on stuff. The core of your instrument is right here in the neck of the instrument. This is where you will need the most help when looking for your first instrument. Everything, everything about this instrument is right here. If this is not right, the instrument will not be right. And what I am talking about is, especially on inexpensive instruments for beginning guitarists, or just an inexpensive instrument that uh, an intermediate guitarist wants to buy. Uh, the quality of your neck, uh, the way it is made, the way the frets are done on it, uh, will make it a good instrument, a bad instrument, or a great instrument. Now, for example, this Jackson is a budget Jackson. Uh, again, they go for about $300 street, I paid $200 for this. I was lucky and caught it on sale, but it does have some issues. 
issues for me as somebody that has been playing for 30 years may not be that bad but for a beginner may be very bad very hard to deal with uh, when you have an instrument like this let's get this thing up here and look at it i apologize if i had bumped the camera uh, you're going to look at the individual frets here. On this instrument, there is less time spent in fine-tuning the frets than you would have in a much more expensive instrument. And that is something I took into account buying it. I knew for a fact when this guitar came out of the box, it was going to have to have some work done on it. Um, it is unrealistic to expect on a budget guitar that it will not. And what that involves is all of these frets, they need to be the same size and the same level. They need to be what is called dressed well. And in this guitar, a shortcoming is right here on the fret ends. Uh, you cannot see this, but if I rub my finger right up over that fret end, I can catch on that fret end. It is not as well dressed on the end. When you play and you run your hand up and down this neck, you can feel that. Some of them uh, stick out slightly. There goes my pick. Some of them stick out slightly, and it is common in a very inexpensive instrument, you can have frets that are so sharp they can cut your finger. All right, so in a budget instrument, you cannot expect that instrument to come out of the box perfect. Um, what you are looking for is a good core that you can build on. Is the neck straight? Okay, you do not want a twisted neck, you do not want an overly bowed neck, you do not want over back bow in it, um, you want the neck to be aligned in the body uh, with the bridge. All of those things are core foundational things with your guitar. If they are good, if you've got some rough frets, you can work on those. Uh, you can take it to a guitar tech or a luthier and have a fret job done on it. And many times, many times, it will not be such a bad issue that it will inhibit you from playing in the beginning. It may be something you may not even realize is bad until you become a little more advanced skill-wise as a guitarist. Uh, many people would pick up this guitar and never realize that the frets needed work on it because actually it came with a pretty decent fret job. Uh, the neck was straight and flat, straight out of the box. It did not have uh, excess relief or bow in it. Uh, it does have a little buzzing on the fretboard, but it is not bad. And I felt like I got a little lucky with this instrument because those issues are very common, really at all price points. You have to remember, this instrument is made of multiple parts, half of which are wood and half of which are metal. Wood reacts to temperature and humidity, and metal does not. So, over the lifetime of this guitar, this neck will move from season to season. Many people will set their guitars up two or three times a year to accommodate that movement. Some guitars are more stable than other guitars. Uh, typically, the thicker and heavier a neck is, the more stable it will be, but that is not always true. Uh, necks on modern guitars have graphite reinforcement rods in them. They have two-way adjustable truss rods that allow you to adjust the neck bow in both directions. Um, really, it is sort of a heyday for a guitarist as far as inexpensive instruments go. Now, so, if, you, if the core of your neck is good, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can grow into it and work on it as you grow into it. But what you're looking for is the foundation. So we've got, we've got a classic, ergonomic, comfortable body shape. 
a fixed bridge over a tremolo type bridge and we want to make sure the neck is good again get somebody that you know that plays guitar is knowledgeable about guitars go down to the guitar store um, try your mom and pop stores that you can build a relationship with the people that work there the people that own them and you can go in and say hey listen I have a young person I'm buying an instrument for, or I'm a young person I'm buying an instrument, and the potential for a lifetime of purchasing instruments from you is right here in front of you. If you will help me make sure I get a good starting instrument, you will earn my respect and probably my return business. That is what you are looking for, a solid foundation and anybody in a music store that is knowledgeable can help steer you in that direction you need to be firm because remember they are salespeople. they are in the business of selling musical instruments they will try to sell you more expensive instruments but the thing is just like here We've got a guitar that's $300 that I found on sale for $200, and it is very solid, not perfect, but very solid. There are many, many instruments out there. In fact, all the major brands have solid instruments around that price point. So if you like Ibanez guitars or Jackson guitars or Gibson guitars or Fender guitars, there are versions of their guitars out there in their brand or their sub brand. Some of them have budget branding within their family uh, that are quality instruments. Uh, Gibson guitars has Epiphone guitars. Fender has Squire guitars. Uh, Squire makes Fender Stratocasters. They're just not branded Fender. They're branded Squire. They're at a much lower price point. The quality is not as high as a Fender, but they are excellent entry-level instruments. Within a company like Jackson, they have different price point product lines. Like Jackson has the JS series, which is their entry. And then you go up to the X series. And then you go up to the Pro series. And then you can go up to their American-made custom shop instruments. And the good thing is, the majority of their body shapes are made at every level. Uh, they make a dinky in the JS series, the X series, the Pro Series, and the American-made models. So you can spend anywhere from the two or $300 JS Series up to three or four or $5,000 on a custom shop model and get a dinky if that's what you like, or a Flying V, uh, or a Soloist, uh, any of the shapes that Jackson makes, and many companies are like that. They offer a wide range of price points for musical instruments. And there are certain companies out there that have a reputation for quality, even in their budget realm. Jackson's JS series has a great reputation in the budget realm. Are they perfect? No, they're budget guitars. Think about it this way. If you took everything about this guitar, all of the electronics, the hardware, the neck, the body, and you price those out, even the cheapest made junk, you would come up with $100 to $200 worth of parts. Okay? Then you've got to pay labor on top of that to the people that work in your factories and put these things together. You've got finishing. Imagine how much it costs to spray a glossy finish on an instrument. I mean, that is mirror glossy, and it's not perfect. There might be some slight flaws in it somewhere, but for the most part, you're looking at a very high-quality finish, and it is not cheap to do these things. Imagine 
you go aftermarket and you find a luthier to fret and finish a neck for you, you are looking at three or four or five hundred dollars just for that work. Just for the work and not for the materials. So, it is very easy to see um, at this price point, there's got to be some corners cut. It is not going to be a perfect instrument. Just to make sure that you have got a good foundation. And if you do not know how to find that for yourself, find somebody more experienced. Musicians are a very good family, and they want to help young people. Even the most jaded, cranky, rock star wannabe wants to be the person that helps the next upcoming superstar. That is just a fact. We all want to help somebody find and get into music because we love music. And the next generation that comes along is going to carry the torch for that. Now, we'll quickly go over, we've got about four or five minutes left here, we will quickly go over some different things that you might expect work-wise to have to do to a budget guitar to get it up and going as a very playable instrument. Now, do not get caught up in guitar pickups. I'm going to tell you the truth. Majority of your guitar tone comes from your amplifier. Almost all name brand, even budget guitars, have decent pickups that will do you for a couple of years. You will not be able to tell the difference anyway between these pickups that come in it and expensive aftermarket. Do not get caught up in that. Um, it is a money pit. Okay, the number one thing, let me, I'll run you through what I'm going to do to this guitar here. Now, um, everything is super solid about this guitar. It does need a fret job on it, and we are going to replace the nut right here, just like the bridge is a connecting point on the body. The nut is the connecting point at the far end here on the neck. This is a plastic nut. And that is what you will find commonly on budget instruments. And the problem with that is you have metal strings, uh, some of which are wound strings, and they are moving through that as you tune the guitar. And they will stick in this material. That will cause your guitar, as you play it, and you bend the strings, and you you increase tension, you let off tension. You increase tension, you let off tension. The string moves through the nut, and it will stick, and it will cause it to go out of tune. So you replace the nut with a higher quality nut down the road. Uh, it's not expensive. Uh, typically on something like this, a modern sort of heavy metal guitar, you would get a graphite nut that is self-lubricating. The actual nut itself is very inexpensive, and you can get a luthier to install it probably for less than $50. The next thing is, is your tuners. That is how you tune this instrument. Inexpensive tuners will have slop, um, they will have backlash in them, and they may require, again, that may cause some tuning instability, and you will have to tune more frequent. Now, that is both a bad thing and a good thing. And the reason I say that is, is uh, you need to learn how to tune a guitar. The first thing you need to do is get yourself an electric tuner. Uh, they, there's tons of them out there, just hundreds of different electric tuners. Find the most popular, highest rated one that's within your price point and get it and start learning how to tune your guitar and you will develop an ear for tuning over time. So, it's not always bad, uh, but that's not good. I'm not saying it's good that you've got to tune it all the time. So what I'm going to do on this instrument is I'm not going to worry about the pickups. The pickups are decent in this guitar. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the nut. I'm going to replace the tuners with some locking tuners. 
and I'm going to have the fretwork done on it. And then, once it is playing the best it can, and is stable tuning-wise, then I will move on maybe to replacing the pickups. Maybe. Maybe I will really like them. I don't know yet. I've just had the guitar for a few days. So, you don't always have to jump right in and start changing everything, and you don't have to spend a ton of money to get a moderately decent guitar to start out on. Now, I will do a continuation in this series uh, to keep the video length down, but this is a good start on this. If you have any questions, drop down into the comment section. I go through my comment section and answer every comment that I find. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you. Rock on, and we will talk to you again.